Um, so as we're going over Power Teacher Pro, um, you'll have an opportunity to log into the training server. And um, but if you are watching this recording, you cannot access the training server. But by that point, if somebody is watching this recording, hopefully you have your live stuff to look at. Um, so I gave you guys the slideshow link, but if you needed to access some of these resources, um, I wanted to show you around um, my website and actually uh, we're going to go to the technology in motion website. So when you get to my website, which is jsutim.org, you can click on the power school link. Now I um, used to have all my resources here and I have moved them to the Alabama Technology in Motion site. And here's where I am, have been posting all things Schoology and all things Power Teacher Pro. And so you can see there's a menu across the top. Also, when you go down here, you can click on any of these buttons. Um, so today we are doing this Power Teacher Pro slideshow right here. So if you are Needing to find this later or share it with someone, it's on this website. Also, if you like a paper guide, because this whole program is going to be a learning curve for everybody. Like we're going to all take a little bit of time figuring our way around this. Um, so these three buttons have um, three different types of user guides that might be helpful to you. Um, this first one is on the portal, which is what we're going to talk about the first half of today. Um, and it kind of guides you through the portal and the information you can get there. The second one is specifically about the grade book, but it does have really good screenshots. There's a table of contents. Um, this one uh, is, is very thorough. And I like it a lot. So if you're a binder person and you want to put this in a binder by your desk, I would recommend that. And then the third one, they call it a quick reference card, but it's 30 pages. So there's nothing quick about this. Um, but this is another really handy tool for you to print out and have by your desk. Um, so just to kind of recap, like how did I get there? If you are on our slideshow and you go to slide number two, it's got the link to my um, website on there. When you go to the website and go to the Power School page, it's going to take you out to our Technology in Motion Power School and Schoology page. I went to the Power Teacher Pro menu option up here at the top. You could also click Power Teacher Pro at the bottom. And you've got these three buttons, which are some user guides that you can download their PDFs. And if you want to download those, print them. If you have access to a color printer, I would print it in color and just put it in a binder and flag it, highlight it. Um, you know, I think that this program is fairly intuitive, but it is very deep and wide. So you're going to click one option and get 10 possibilities, which is going to be a little overwhelming for folks. So those three user guides are there. And then also I have a YouTube playlist that I am building, which includes recordings of what I um, present, as well as other um, videos that I find and that I think are helpful. Um, so you can definitely check that out. All right, so closing up some of these tabs and going back to our slideshow. That's my reminder to record. Um, this is a little bit about me. If you've not been in any of my sessions, I am uh, Brandy Caldwell with Alabama Technology in Motion. I have been with the program since 2015 at the Jacksonville State University Regional In-Service Center. I'm a proud nationally board certified teacher. I'm actually going to be going through maintenance of certification this year. So this will be my third round of national boards stuff. I'm a former high school English teacher for 13 years. And then I was a district tech integration specialist for five years in St. Clair County. Um, there's also my contact information. If you wanna reach out to me, if you do Twitter, it's always appreciated. If you give a shout out there, include hashtag ATMPD. Um, I plan on um, that second full week in August being 
uh, at not really, I guess, office hours, technically. I'm not going to go out into the schools. Um, so if you run into something and you need help with it uh, immediately, you can um, email me and I can set up a Zoom link or something and I can try to help you as best I can. Keep in mind, I have 15 school districts, so um, I'm going to be trying to help people as much as I can uh, as school starts. Um, so I've got several of you I know that came in um, a little bit late, so I'm going to repaste that slideshow link. Um, and I see Dana ask, what's my email? It is on this slide. So hopefully that is what you need. And so we're going to get started here with adding your wonders about PowerSchool. Now, this, I've got a bunch of them stacked up here from the last group that we had. And actually, I'm wondering if I can clear them. There we go. So it, this is a Google Jamboard. And so um, if you sorry, can, if you can access my Google home speaker just said, sorry, I don't understand because I said the word Google. How about that? Um, anyway, uh, this is a Jamboard. So if you go to slide number four and you click right here, where it says go here to add your wonders about power school. Um, I want you to use this board and click on the sticky note tool, which is right over here to the left. And I want you to tell me what are some things you're wondering about this program. Some of you may be brand new teachers. You maybe have never even used iNow or Chalkable. Some of you may be seasoned teachers like me who have worked through STI, iNow, and Chalkable. Um, and a paper grade book. Uh, so what are some things that you are wondering or some things you're curious about when it comes to this Power Teacher Pro grade book? What are some things you've heard? What is something you hope um, that you can do in the program? Um, so if you will click on the little sticky note tool on the left, write your sticky note there. You can choose whatever color you want. Um, and put your note on the board there. I'll give some folks some time to catch up with us and um, access this. This link is on slide number four. Uh, I do try to make it as interactive as possible, which is really hard in Zoom, um, but this is a good way to do it. Uh, I was gonna see, I can also copy this link and put that in the chat as well, if that will help you. If you want to click that direct link or copy and paste that link to the Google Jamboard. Um, and this is where you can um, add your thoughts, your questions, your wonders about Power School, Power Teacher Pro. Um, you are uh, going to find that if you've not used Jamboard before, that these notes tend to kind of stack on top of one another. You can move them around. I can move them around. Um, feel free to add some of these notes. Um, and while people are finishing their sticky notes here, put in the chat, have you ever used Google Jamboard? It's really pretty easy fairly intuitive. Uh, I know some people may be using Google Jamboard with some AMSTA training or some professional learning. Um, I love it because it's a quick and easy way to get a discussion, to get responses from students. Um, the way that, um, the reason why I chose it is because it's a Google product. And if you have a Google account, you can easily set one up and um, I just simply, just like every other Google thing, clicked share and said share for you guys to be editors. Um, so it is a great way to collaborate. Um, I also have um, multiple pages on this particular Jamboard. And so I can collect, um, for those of you that are secondary teachers, 
Uh, and I didn't do a good job with this particular one because I forgot to change the link from last week. Um, but I typically will flip the page and change the link. So I'm actually collecting first period, second period, third period responses on, uh, in one location. And I think that that's pretty handy too. All right, so we're getting some good questions here. Um, I like to start off with this because I think that that is just a good way to start off a lesson. Um, ask what the preconceived notions are. Ask what questions students have already about something. And so this is kind of what we're gonna do. I know we've got like 40 something people in here and not everybody is maybe where they can access doing something like this or maybe they are not comfortable doing it. Um, but anyway, if people add some other information here, um, we'll address that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first note up there on the left, lesson planning features. So I'm just curious um, for the person that put, oh, let's see, I can't get it to work. Um, so I did have one or two other people in my trainings the other day who could not get the Google Jamboard to work. So if you have a question and you couldn't put it on here, you're welcome to put it in the chat. Um, so I'm curious, the person that asked about lesson planning, if you don't mind, what school are you with that ask about the lesson planning features? I mean, it could be any, it could be any of our schools, Southside. Okay, so um, I'm gonna guess it might've been some of your administrators that asked me when I taught the PLU on Power School about lesson planning. Um, unfortunately, and this is directly from my Power School contacts, there is not a lesson planning piece or feature in Power Teacher Pro. Um, you'll see where you can add descriptions to your assignments. You can also attach standards to assignments. But as far as a lesson plan, something your administrators could go in and print a report or look at, it doesn't exist. Um, so it may be a big shift um, on how your administration um, collects lesson plans or um, addresses them. I have seen some administrators very successfully use Google Classroom, create a classroom with their staff in there and um, have folders or areas where teachers could upload lesson plans each week or each month or however you collect those. So no lesson planning feature. Um, but that is just part of changing to a new program. All right, will Google Classroom integrate into the gradebook feature? So the short answer to this is no, it will not. Um, you can use all of the Google tools you want. Um, you can pull those into Schoology if you're comfortable um, using Schoology. Um, I do know teachers that have worked kind of a hybrid or blended model where they still keep their Google Classroom because y'all I love a Google Classroom like I'm Google certified trainer. I teach that some of you might have been through my boot camp. I'm a fan. Um, and so the transition for some is going to be hard, but um, I do know some people who kind of straddle the fence with Schoology and Google Classroom and basically they shoot Google Classroom links into Schoology, however you want to do that. Um, there is a Chrome extension and um, if you will remind me toward the end, I've actually, I think in our slideshow, I have set it to skip that slide. I didn't delete the slide, but I have set it to skip that slide. The very next to the last slide talks about a Chrome extension for using Google Classroom and integrating the grades into PowerTeacher Pro. So it can be done, um, but it doesn't appear to be an easy process. And that's because I think PowerSchool would like for you to use Schoology. They own Schoology now, and they have set something up to be able to sync grades from Schoology to PowerTeacher Pro. So yes and no, mostly no. Um, will grades transfer automatically from Google Forms assignments? Um, you know, I don't know that that has ever been the case. Um, when you're doing a Google Forms assignment or quiz, um, there is a way to 
export those grades from a spreadsheet and there's an import feature in Power Teacher Pro. Now I have not personally tried it, um, but the biggest um, problem with that, and, and like I said, it's several steps. So some teachers are like, by the time I do all those steps, I can manually enter all their scores into Power Teacher Pro. Um, the biggest issue with anything coming over from Google is that the, the student names have to match identically. So in Power Teacher Pro, if it has pulled over legal names of your students and it has like John M. Smith and in Google Classroom or in Forms, um, they are signed in with their email and it's John Smith, um, there may be an issue pulling that over. Um, so I think there's some logistic issues with that. Um, I wish I had a better answer for that because I love Google Forms quiz. Is it user friendly, easy to learn, reliable? Okay, so let me address reliable because I don't have it live on a server in a school yet. I can't 100% say reliable. Um, I will say that PowerSchool is a large company that's been around for a long time. Um, so I, won't, I don't think we have to worry about it going away or it not being reliable um, on that front. As far as um, will it shut down or be, you know, not work. I don't know. We haven't seen that track record. Um, there are some pilot schools across the state of Alabama who have been doing some with Power School and Power Teacher Pro. Um, so I have to hope maybe they've worked out the bugs. Is it user friendly or easy to learn? I do think the program is fairly intuitive. Um, I don't know that I would say easy because anytime we have to learn something and we have to learn a new vocabulary and where things are located, it can be frustrating. Um, so we just got to remember everybody give each other some grace this year as we start the year, um, especially your administration, counselors, front office people. Their part of the puzzle is way harder than the teacher part. Um, I've mostly been teaching that during the um, winter and spring and summer, and your principals are still probably learning this program and will be learning it all through the year. User friendly, we'll see. Um, a lot of people want to know about that. What capabilities does this program have that I now didn't? A lot. Uh, I think when you get over the fact that you've got to learn where things are located, um, you're going to see some progress tracking, um, some ways to look at at-risk students, um, some very data-driven pages and screens that I think you're going to love. Um, if you can kind of get over the fact that the program at, is deep and wide and there's a lot to it. Um, so it has a lot of capabilities. I now did not. And I think you will see that as we go through this. Will there be a way to add special education services for teachers? So I'm assuming you mean like permissions to see like an IEP, maybe if that's the question. Um, so I will say that, um, okay, let's see. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, where to access the website and log into Power Teacher Pro. So I'm gonna give you access to our training server very shortly, Ashley. And here is the link to the slideshow that we're on right now. We're on slide number four. Um, so you are going to have access to uh, see a student's IEP as a regular ed teacher. I think that's fantastic. So if I click on Miranda Anderson and she is in the special ed program, when I go to her page called special programs, it should load her IEP. Now, all that to say that our special ed teachers, in my opinion, have not had as much training as they probably would like. So they're still learning the program too. So hopefully those things will be loaded and ready to go when school starts. All right, somebody said to use this program when teaching in another state, loved it, haven't been logged in for the past two years. Hopefully nothing's changed too much. Well, it has. <laughs> um, I started training on this, like I said, back in February. And by May, they had changed lots of icons, added some pages. I think they're all positive changes, um, but I'm glad to, to see that. I had someone else say that in another session the other day that they loved it. So that gives me hope. 
what led us to the decision to go with power school so um i think the biggest thing and you're gonna see this is that in our previous programs we did not have high quality ways to track student progress to see when a student was at risk of dropping out um, so many uh, districts were having to purchase third party programs, dashboards that would help pull grades and discipline and standardized test scores and all of that to look at a student over time. Um, and I know having taught from a four by four block schedule to an eight period day to a, all these different schedules, I know sometimes in the grind of just being a teacher, um, you don't realize that a student is quietly failing and they're three weeks into school and their grades have tanked. Um, so there are some ways within this program that I think are gonna be helpful to teachers and to the school as a whole to start looking at some of those students. Um, that's just my opinion. That's the, the first thing that I think was probably the decision. Um, and then personally, I will just say that I now Chalkable STI, that company was a very small company and power school actually purchased them. And when they purchased them and we had the choice to change over to their bigger um, parent product, it is a much better product. So that's my two cents worth. I don't know if that's the ALSCE answer, but that's the Brandy answer. Will assignments in school, do you transfer to the grade book automatically? Mm, automatically, no. Um, there is a process and we will talk a little bit about that process. We spend a little more time looking at it, I believe in the Schoology presentation, if you're gonna be in that one this afternoon, um, but it is a grade pass back feature and it's an app that's installed in Schoology and you have to run the sync to sync those grades, um, but it's not like you have to do anything really but push a button. And um, so, the one thing I would encourage you to tell your par parents and students is that the official grade book is Power Teacher Pro, what they're going to see in the parent portal, not the Schoology grade book. The reason why I say that is because the grade pass back is one way, meaning that my students do a bunch of assignments in Schoology. I tell it to sync. It sends it from Schoology to Power Teacher Pro. Um, if I do something that's not in Schoology, uh, in-person assignment, and I just want to put it in Power Teacher Pro, those grades do not pass back the other way to Schoology. It's one way. So the grades will, the grade books will never be in sync totally if you ever put anything into Power Teacher Pro. Um, so I would just make everybody understand the official grade book and your official grade is in the parent portal and it's Power Teacher Pro. Uh, will we be able to copy grades down the grade book? Yes, there's a fill button. I think it's actually an improved fill button over what you've used in the past. Um, so we'll definitely look at that. Look, that is a necessity for teachers. All right, if a student changes the schedule, um, will their grades move with them without the grades having to be manually entered? <gasps> okay, so I am pretty sure. So here's why I say that. Um, it's hard for me to replicate that with my training server, but there is a transfer scores option, which I think is probably going to do what you're talking about. Um, because yes, I'm a former high school teacher and that is super annoying. Now, if a student transfers in from another school, I think we're still in the same boat. Somebody maybe at the office level or you as the teacher will have to um, manually enter a grade and start from that point. Um, but I am pretty sure with the transfer scores option that allows you to make that change. So I actually need to put that question in my sheet. I have a a uh, smart sheet that I um, share with some power school trainers and they, um, it allows me to ask some questions from my trainings and I have power school trainers that will come in there and answer those questions. So I'm actually, while I'm thinking about it, see there's, there've been a few questions and they haven't answered some of my last few. Um, 
Hey, look, that is actually the last question I ask. If a student changes classes from one biology teacher to another, how do the scores transfer? How do they transfer in Schoology and Power Teacher Pro? So I think um, it, whether it's from one teacher to another or even same teacher, different period, I think their answer should be the same. Um, so I will harass some of my power school friends because it's been a minute since I put these questions in there. Um, but they've been pretty good on answering my questions. So I just need to um, check back in, the, in with them. Um, so anyway, thank you for those great answers. Those are just what we needed to get started with this, um, to see that we all have a lot of questions. Um, I start all of my sessions with a vocabulary lesson because I do think um, that it is important that we kind of start with the same um, vocabulary. Um, let's see. The first is power school professional learning. So where you went to put in um, to register for this workshop, that's called power school professional learning or power school PD. Um, you just don't want to call it just power school because power school means a lot of different things. So we want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Power school CIS or school information system. This is what your administration, counselor, central office people will be working in. This is the big piece. If you're going to call anything just power school, it is that, the power school CIS. Power teacher portal, that is your version of the CIS. And that is where you would um, access student information. That's where you will um, take attendance. Um, so you're gonna have one section that is the power teacher portal. And then you're going to port to the next section, which is the grade book. And it is called Power Teacher Pro. So Power Teacher Pro is your grade book piece. This is where you will enter grades. Um, you can enter assignments and this is where your grades will end up if you are using Schoology. Next is Schoology. Schoology is the learning management system. Um, this is what many of you will be using to organize your assignments. Some of you may have done that already. And um, Schoology does have a way to get your grades from Schoology to Power Teacher Pro. Next is special programs. So special programs is the new special ed piece. It is um, replacing sets, which is what special ed teachers were using. And special programs, there's a um, kind of one-stop shopping. Special ed teachers with permissions to that will log in on their teacher credentials and they can access special programs in um, Power Teacher Portal. And then those of you that are regular ed teachers can access um, the IEPs and things that have been loaded into special programs. And then finally, Performance Matters. Performance Matters is an app. Um, it is uh, something that you can log into, put in your code from PowerSchool Professional Learning, and you can see any workshops you've signed up for, where they're located, information like that. Performance Matters is also an analytics piece. Um, you will have people in your district that will get trained on this in September. Um, this is a tool that allows you to look at data over time with students. So the State Department will load any required tests like the ACAP or ACT. And then they'll also allow each district to load benchmark tests. So at the elementary level, if your benchmark test is iReady or Renaissance or Global Scholar, Scantron, you know, whatever it is, you can load that and start looking at student progress. Um, same thing with your high school students. Any of these standardized tests that they take, um, it may be a PSAT, it may be the ACT, it may be something else that you're using for benchmarks. So when I say, here's how you take attendance and I show you, then you have time to go in and try it yourself. That is the best way to learn this. We know that with students is the best way is, you know, I do, you do, we do kind of thing. It's really hard in a Zoom. 
So this is kind of our, our best strategy um, is to do this. Um, so let me know in the chat if you get an error or if you happen to log in and the teacher that you chose has no classes because that's going to be a problem as well. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started, I think. Let's see if we worked out all the kinks. Um, <laughs> I love it, Jason. You're such a character. I love it. Apple Grove High School. I don't know what their mascot is, but we should come up with a mascot for the training server. Um, the elementary that goes with Wash uh, Apple Grove is Washington Elementary. Um, also at Cherry Hill Middle School. Um, so maybe we're the hatchets. I don't know. There should be something. Um, so, all right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think we have people at least have claimed a username and password if they're going to claim one. And so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Um, I will be toggling between my presentation and the um, training server. And so um, on my slideshow, you're going to see a lot of screenshots um, because after today, um, I really don't want you using that username and password again because I do multiple trainings and I only have 50 usernames. Um, so you may not be able to see this program again until it's live in your district which may be like August 3rd or something for you guys. It just depends. Um, but the landing page is Power Teacher Portal. Um, this is your version of the SIS or the school information system. Um, if you happen to be um, a special ed teacher, you will click right here and that's where you'll access special programs. Now, um, everyone can see the link to it, but you won't be able to go to it unless you have permissions to do so. Um, but the good thing is it's all single sign on. So once you sign on and you get in here, um, you can access it there. I do believe that's probably also where they're going to have um, performance matters when we have access to the analytics. I think you'll see it there as well. Other things across the top, um, that little caution symbol there is going to let you know the last time you um, logged in or if there are um, attempts at logging in. Um, then you've got the printer button up there. So that's pretty handy as you're learning this program. Print screen is going to be something you're going to use a few times and um, that is one of the buttons that comes becomes very handy. Um, you have a question mark, which is your help center. And then at the top, you have your uh, ability to manage your profile. Over on the left is your main menu for Power Teacher Portal. And we are landing on the start page. All right, so the left navigation includes Power Teacher Pro, which is going to take you out to the grade book. So one of the number one complaints at least I think it will be for teachers, is you mean I have to take attendance in one place and put my grades in another? Yes. Um, you don't have to sign in on anything else, but yes, technically, when I click Power Teacher Pro, it's going to take me to an entirely different site. Um, so that's kind of a pain, and I'll show you a trick that I think is going to be helpful to make that manageable for teachers. Um, the start page, that's where you land, that's your default. Um, there's daily bulletin, there's schedule, staff directory, meals, um, reports. Now we're going to talk about three locations that you as a teacher can print reports. This location is for entire group, everybody I teach reports. You don't have a choice. You can only print these reports for every single kid you teach. If I teach six periods of biology, I have 100 kids, it prints 100 of these reports. There's another location that prints by class. There's a third location, which is probably where you're going to spend most of your time printing reports, and that's in the grade book, and that's what we'll look at toward the end of today. Um, recommendations, which is class recs, and we'll look at that in attendance summary. 
Um, some of these options may not appear for you when this goes Alabama live. All right, I see in the chat, Natalie says, will resource teachers be able to view their students' grades, lessons, and be able to put in accommodations? So I know that you will use special programs for IEPs and looking at your caseload of students. Now, that's a question that has come up in several of my trainings. So I'm a special ed teacher and you're telling me I only have access to students on my roster, on my schedule. How do I have access to my students? Um, I had one group talk about um, that they typically add special ed teachers as a secondary instructor in a course. Um, so I'm guessing if that's something that has always been done in iNow, there's also the capability to do it in PowerSchool. I haven't done it myself, like on the admin end, adding somebody as a secondary teacher in a course. Um, so that may be the route you have to take. Otherwise, I'm not sure what uh, students you'll have access to unless they've created a schedule for you and those students are on your roster. If they are on a roster for you, then yes, you'll be able to go in and view their grades and lessons. I don't know about putting in accommodations. So that's what I know about that answer. All right, so most of the next few slides are screenshots talking about the different items over here on the left. So we're just gonna spend a minute and look at these. The first one down is daily bulletin. Now I'm just gonna be real with you. I don't see people utilizing this right away. First of all, I had to click on it to see it. And let's just have a reality check. Nobody's got time for that. I'm not gonna click that to see my announcements unless you put jeans day or free snacks in the break room like several days in a row, I'm not going to click on that. So I think a lot of your administrators will probably use whatever your current um, announcement process is, whether it's paper, whether it's email. Um, but if they go to this, no, you do have to click it to see it. Um, administrators may use this to push announcements out to the parent portal, though. Next down is schedule. So this shows me my schedule as a teacher which is great, but like after day one, do I really need this? I don't know, but there it is. There's my schedule in beautiful color. Next is staff directory. So the staff directory is just that, a directory of staff members. Um, but notice at the top, you can filter this. So if I just wanted to see teachers, I can filter it by teachers. Um, if I wanted to see lunch staff, lunch staff is on here and substitute. So this one um, has the potential that I think would be nice to have your substitutes listed here. I'm not sure if your district is going to do it, but there is a substitute URL for PowerSchool that gives them limited view only options like to take attendance and things like that. Um, but that will depend on if your district wants to include substitutes here. But there it is, staff directory. Next is meals. So this is going to have a lot to do with if your lunch program is going to talk to power school. So I don't know what your current lunch program is. I talked to one school district the other day. They are using Mosaic and they are paying a fee to have Mosaic talk to power school. So I don't know if you're an elementary teacher, if you've typically done like lunch counts and things in I now, I'm not really sure how that's going to work. And I don't really have a way to replicate that, but you may see meals here. All right, next is reports. So this is when I told you this is for every kid. So as this teacher, I have 77 students in all my classes. Notice I cannot change this. So this is where I would print reports for every kid. The reports that I see here are going to be limited. So the reports I'm going to see here are going to be whatever the district has loaded and check the box that says teachers can print. Um, so it may be mailing labels. It may be, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of informational type reports academic reports like a progress report, um, like a class roster, those kind of things are going to be in the grade book and that'll be our third place for reports. So the first place to print reports you print for everybody is right here. Um, we'll do a sample one like parent guardian mailing labels. I'm going to guess that one's probably going to be loaded for everybody. It's a very basic one. 
Um, and I'm just going to say submit. So once I have a report pending, a little sheet of paper icon will show up here. Now I can sit here and click refresh or I can go about my business. I can go to a different page. I can go wherever. When the report is done, that little paper will have a check mark on it. So this is pretty handy. I can then click on my report. So hot tip number one, these particular reports are PDFs. If I just click on it, it will take over my PowerSchool controls. If I click on it, right click and say open in new tab, I will keep my PowerSchool controls and I will open that in a new tab. So that's what I recommend. Right click, open link in new tab. And there it is. There are my mailing labels. Now, if you look at this and you're like, I don't really like this all caps. I don't like the way it's set up. I'm going to tell you probably at the beginning of school, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. Because changing some of these templates for reports is not simple. It is something that has to be done at the administrative level. Um, so just sort of roll with it. And if you are just passionate, hey, I need to make this change, then you will need to talk to somebody that really loves you in the office because the only person who can make those changes are those with admin credentials. All right, so that's reports. The next page down is recommendations. So this one's really unique for my secondary people. Um, I know that I have done written recommendations for a kid, like this kid wants to be in AP English. Um, they have to get two teacher recommendations. Uh, maybe they wanna be on the yearbook staff and to get in the yearbook class, they have to have teacher recommendations. Um, so that's how I think this is going to work. So fast forward to like the spring of next year, they've already started doing class requests for kids. And I would say create recommendation. I would say the kids I'm going to recommend are my first period class. I'm going to choose Miranda and Morgan. I can scroll down and click next. It's going to ask what class am I recommending them for? I'm going to say AP English and AP History. And then I can make a comment here if I want to. Great student. And submit. Now I can see, oh, look, man, I have, yeah, I've recommended them for English and for history, both of them. And if I needed to edit specific comment, like just for Miranda, I could change that comment and say, um, grades, ooh, I have to spell it correctly, grades do not reflect um, ability. How about that? We have a lot of kids that are like that. So I can do a specific comment if I needed to. All right, and there you go. So these recommendations would be pushed up with like course requests on the um, counselor side. And you could see these and they would stay attached to those students. So I can't see other teachers requests, I mean recommendations, but I can see any of them that I've made. The last one, attendance summaries, this one's kind of strange. This appears to be the attendance summary for you as the teacher. Now, I have never had any of my HR records tied to anything I can see. Like, I have to dig really hard to see how many sick days I have left. Um, there's the potential for this to be um, something that you can see, but I do know that it has to be filled in on the admin side. So, don't know if you'll see this or not, but there it is. All right, so how do we get back home? Now, for this one, we could click on the word start page. But universally in PowerSchool, if you click the PowerSchool logo, it takes you back home, takes you back to the starting page. So the PowerSchool logo takes me back home. Looking at the slideshows, like I said, I've just got all of these different pages kind of describing what each of these um, different items will do for you. And now we're looking at these icons. What do they mean? 
So if you happen to be um, someone who's watching some of the Power School PD Plus videos, or you've done a search on YouTube, or even printed out some older documentation, you may see that these icons do not look like the icons in um, your documentation. So um, I was training in late May in Piedmont. I came back day two to train. All these icons had changed. I was very frustrated. I actually shot off a couple of probably not so nice emails saying, hey, if I'm going to be training on this, can I get a heads up if we do a big update? And sure enough, they had done a major update, changed all the icons, changed some buttons in Power Teacher Pro, and I had to change all my screenshots and all my training materials. Yay. Um, but what this means for you is cleaner, fancier icons. Um, so if you are looking at any old documentation and it talks about the backpack, not a backpack anymore. It's like a student ID card. Um, so these are the icons you will work in most of the time in the Power Teacher portal. First of all, attendance. So already some of you may be thinking, um, this lady has shown us all this stuff and I am yet to see um, like anything about grades and grade book. It's because we're in the portal, which is mostly student information and attendance. Um, who's saying, okay, just the facts. What do I have to know to get started? You wanna take them directly to this icon and say, here's how you take attendance. They don't even probably care about all the stuff we just talked about. They probably don't even care about most of this stuff we're gonna discuss after this, but I'm gonna show you how to take attendance. And then the next thing they're gonna to need to know is Power Teacher Pro, which is what we're gonna look at after we address these icons. So single day attendance, you can take attendance there, hit submit, you're good to go. Multi-day attendance is gonna show you a span of like two weeks. Um, a lot of teachers like this, you can kind of look ahead and behind at what a student has been doing. Also, if the office has put in any attendance for the future or the past, you can look at that. Um, and then the third way to take attendance, and I have a lot of teachers that love this, is to build a seating chart and be able to take attendance on your seating chart. Um, and this is kind of cool. So um, next there's the lunch icon, which again, depending on your lunch program, I don't know what you'll see there. Student information pages. This is when I need to get contact information, demographics. I need to see a student's grades. You're gonna wanna go to their student information pages. Um, this is the second location that you will print reports. This is going to be for this class. So you can see on your training server, like this would be first period biology, this would be second period biology. If I click this printer, that's going to print for every kid in first period. Not a single kid, like I can't narrow it down to one. This is for um, just that class. And you'll probably see the exact same report options you saw as the big whole group reports. Um, and then this last one, it's called PE waivers. I've had two different people tell me what this is. One said, this is for a kid who has a medical issue and they do not have to participate in PE this week or this month or ever. Then I've had someone else say like in the secondary level, a kid's taking marching band. So they are waived from having to take PE. I don't know which of those it's going to be, but that's what it's called PE waivers. All right, so let's look at taking attendance. All right, so I click on this first little chart. Oh, by the way, if you have not noticed, this high school is a four block high school with alternating A, B days. Look, I know, I, I just think they maybe gave us a really complicated schedule. So when you saw your schedule, it would seem super easy. Um, but anyway, a four block day means there's like an hour and a half in each class and they alternate A and B day. So maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday are A classes, Tuesday, Thursday are B classes. Some of these classes you see cover every day. And then you've got like this class, which is only on B days. So you may see that your attendance icon is grayed out. Any guesses as to why this is grayed out? This will be the interactive portion of this section. So throw it in the chat. Do you have any clue as to why the attendance guy here is grayed out? Oh, I see we have some winners. 
this class does not meet today. Ta-da. So that means if we were looking at the school calendar, this is probably an A day. And this class is only on a B day. So you can't take attendance because this is not in session. So anyway, there you go. If you look and you're going, why can't I take attendance here? So we're going to take attendance. I'm going to click on this little guy. And it's going to open up my meeting attendance for biology. This would also be like homeroom for your elementary folks. And so one thing that people initially notice when they open this is all of these alerts. So if you're following along with me, take a minute, click on some of these alerts and see what you see. So I think you're going to notice some parent alerts, possibly custody situations. Somebody can't pick this child up. Somebody is going to be picking this child up for the next two weeks. Um, so you'll have those kinds of alerts. You may see a medical alert. Okay. Um, medication, allergic to nuts, bee sting allergy, insulin, um, medical alerts, other alerts, cafeteria worker this week. That's a weird one in this training server. It must be a popular thing um, that you would need to know. But there are other alerts uh, like uncle will be picking up for the next two weeks, something that doesn't fall into any of the other stuff. Um, and there's a discipline alert uses inappropriate language. There are some funny ones in here. I am not responsible for all of those, um, but there are several different kinds of alerts. Another one in there is the fee alert. So lunch balance, which won't matter this year because I believe all lunches are free, um, but then the student fee balance may be something. So you can see these alerts. Now I am told that the Alabama version will also have a 504 alert and a special education alert. So as soon as you open up your roster of kids, you're automatically going to know already if they're special ed, if they're 504 or any of these other alerts. Now keep in mind, these alerts are only as good as the data put into the program. So what that means is there is a page on the admin side called alerts. Some of these alerts may come over automatically from the health side that the nurse deals with, but some of them may have to be put in manually. So think about the personnel in your school. Do you have someone dedicated to data entry? Because there's going to be a lot of data entry here at the beginning of the year. So you may not see these alerts right away. And they may be added as you have someone that can add the stuff in. All right, so we love the alerts. That's awesome. How do I take attendance? So a couple of things. If you have 100% attendance, I'm going to go grammar geek on you for a moment. Do you remember when you were learning um, understood you as the subject of the sentence? All right, so if you're like, nope, I don't remember that. That was in third grade. Um, when you would see understood you it was in parentheses out to the side, but it didn't actually exist in the sentence. That's the way I think about the present attendance code. If everybody's here, leave everything blank and click submit. I love that they have a submit button at the bottom and at the top. Thank you, Power School. So I don't have to scroll back to the top. But once I click submit and I say everybody's here, I get this beautiful green validating check mark that lets me know I've taken attendance. And if I had a dollar for every time I heard Ms. Caldwell, will you please post attendance? Um, I'd be a rich woman because that happened quite frequently when I was teaching. Cause you know, I get in there and I'm like teaching and so excited about Shakespeare and whatever I'm teaching, I forget to post attendance. So I can see that I've taken attendance for this class. Um, if I have some kids that are absent, or more specifically, let's say I just have one absence, the easiest way to deal with one absent is just to click in the box and change the code, tardy or absent, and submit. Now, I'm going to go here to second period. Let's say I have like more than one. The, the most efficient way 
to take attendance is to change the code first. So let's say I'm going to change it to unexcused absence. And I can just click anywhere I click, it automatically picks up that code. All those kids are absent. Done. Hit submit. If you're fancy and you need to add some commentary to this for some other reason, you see you have a little gray speech bubble that lets me add a comment. And I can say, you know, third absence this week. I don't know, just because I wanted to. If I have a comment in there, I can see that it's blue. Um, maybe it's a tardy that I'm marking and I could put the time that the student got there. Um, now, some people say, we have more codes than that. Why do I only see these codes? Um, so right now, the State Department is coming up with a uniform way for people to take attendance and uniform codes. Um, I do know that I had some teachers tell me that they put in all the codes. The kids bring them the doctor's notes. They have to code it as doctor's excused or whatever. Um, I think a lot of the schools, though, that's done in the office. The teachers don't do that. Some teachers don't even aren't even allowed to mark tardies. So whatever you did last year, it will probably be very similar to that unless it is something changed by the state. All right, so I'm done with this. Hit submit. Boom, another check mark. Attendance done, yay. But I want to show you all the other options. So we're going to look at this class that's not, well, let's not look at that one. It's not in attendance today. Let's look at multi-day attendance. Now, I want to bring your attention to this. When I click here, I'm actually going to the exact same page, different tab. So notice this, single day attendance, multi-day attendance. So this is the same page, different tab. When I go here, I can see a three week span. I can actually edit and change these three weeks. A lot of teachers like the fact that they can see um, a range of dates. And then I can also see the absences that have accumulated during this time. Any absences in parentheses like this is one that has been put in by the office. So notice there's a few that have already been coded excused absence. Um, so you've got that there, it's in parentheses, you can't change it. And then if I needed to make an adjustment here, I could easily do that and then submit. So I can technically take attendance in multi-day if I want to. Notice multi-day does not shoot me back out to the start page. It lands me right back here. So I would have to go to the beginning to see um, that I had taken attendance. All right, so on these um, pages, I just talk about same page, different tab. Next, we're going to look at seating chart. So you don't have to be a person that's really extra to want to have a seating chart. Um, I love the seating chart feature here. Um, so let me tell you one trick. When I click seating chart, so I'm going to do seating chart for this last class. When I click seating chart, it's going to say, do you want to pre-populate the layout? Just say no. It's just going to save you some time. Say no. So cancel. Some of you are like, I've already said yes. It's OK. It's OK. So here's the reason why I said no. Because when I clicked seating chart, it is ready for me to take attendance on the seating chart. But I haven't even built the seating chart yet. So I'm actually going to go here to the tab called seating chart design. This is where you will create your seating chart and then you can take attendance with it. So I'm going to edit my layout name and I'm going to call this seating chart test days. Whoops, I need to actually spell it correctly. There we go, test days. All right, so this is going to be what our seating chart looks like on days we have a test. I'm going to say OK. All right, so now I need to create it. So you have some handy tools here. First of all, you have the ability to add rows, tables, or single chairs or desks. So I'm going to say on test days, we're going to be in rows. I'm going to say we have five rows, four chairs per row. Now, if I have more students than 20, it's just going to dump them out on the floor. So you kind of have to know how many kids you have in that class when you build this. And I'm going to say add. All right, so I have a little slider over here too that can make this larger or smaller, but I'm just going to scroll up and there are my rows. 
When they are orange like this, I can move them as a whole group. Okay, so I'm gonna move them down just a little bit. When I click off of them, they're white. If I click on a couple, I can move them as a group. All right, so I've got my rows, great. Now, how do I put the kids there? If you want to put them individually in their seats, because sometimes you need to like hand pick kids to go somewhere. You can easily hand pick a kid, drop them into the seat. Or you can use the populate button. You're like, I don't care where they go. Let's just do alphabetical, that makes sense. And add, and boom, they are all there alphabetically. So except for the kids that I individually place. So notice I can place the trouble kids, put them on my desk, whatever, and then I can pre-populate the rest. Notice I didn't have 20 kids, so it didn't fill those last two desks. Click off of it. If I needed to like move a student back here, I could. Uh, maybe I need more room here. Anyway, so I'm done. But if I'm really extra and I want to add some objects, I can add the teacher desk. I can add the whiteboard. And I can even add the door to the classroom. All right, so I have the seating chart. I'm going to say save. Yay. OK, now I need to print it out. Remember I said this little print button is going to become very handy. So I'm going to click print. And there it is. So I can print it out just like that. If I wanted to make it larger, I can use that slider, print it out. Notice it's a little bit larger. Um, I also have the ability to make this landscape or portrait, depending on the size of everything and what I want it to look like. And save. So I made that a PDF, and I can print it out and do whatever I want. But wait, there's more. I actually want to have another seating chart. I'm going to call this one daily. All right, so in my class, I loved having like the double horseshoe. Some of you may have specific seating that you like to set up. So if you have tables, a lot of my elementary folks, science folks have tables. You can say so many tables, so many across, how many chairs per table. I mean, you can get really extra. I'm going to cancel that one. I'm going to just do chairs. So I'm going to do a row of chairs across. And then I'm going to add some other chairs. And I'm actually going to um, move them. So two at a time, I'm going to do this and I'm going to add some more chairs and I'm going to add them here. So like I said, you can get fancy. You can move one at a time. You can move two at a time. Um, so I'm going to create my kind of horseshoe pattern. Um, I know this is not enough seats for everybody, but let's just pretend. I'm going to say populate. I'm going to do random and add. So notice it threw some kids in the floor that didn't have a seat. So then I can just pull them over to where I want them to be. All right. So maybe this is our setup. I've got the teacher desk and the whiteboard. That's going to go down here. And then I am good to go. So I'm going to save this. And I can print it out if I want. Why, Brandy? Why would you want me to do all this? This seems like a lot of work. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go back home. And I'm ready to take roll now with my seating chart. Click it. It has test days. I'm going to change it to daily. And that would be the, technically, if I was going to make a seating chart that I'm going to use the most, I'm going to make it first. And that'll be my default. All right. So here's how I take roll. I can change the attendance code to unexcused, click, 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 everybody's done, submit. Love this. Now, it does not shoot you back out to the start page, so you can go back here to the start page and see that you've taken attendance. Um, notice, too, I can alternate between my test days or my daily seating chart um, and take attendance on any of those. So I love that feature. I think it's going to be super handy for a lot of teachers that want to use a seating chart to take attendance. All right, so 
Next up, and I jumped the gun, so, so sorry. Back to here, seating chart, um, printed out. And this is when I would normally build in some task time for us if we were face-to-face. -face. Um, if you want to try some of these features, these are the tasks that I usually recommend to folks. Um, we're gonna look at task number three in just a second. Um, so what are your thoughts so far on taking attendance? Does this look harder, easier, about the same? Um, somebody already asked, what are some features that this has that I now doesn't have? I like the seating chart feature a lot better. Um, I like that it's colorful. I know that that's kind of probably frivolous, but I do. Um, I like that. Um, I don't know. I just like so far. Now, Kelly's asking the meal and, meal and our question, and I asked this to Power School. Can admin see the seating charts? No, which is stupid. And that's just true. I don't know why they don't have that set up that way. Um, Power School's answer was, well, they have a contact tracing report that is available, but yeah. So I'm gonna guess you would either have to save them and send them to your administration or something because they don't have access to them. And so anyway, it is what it is. Nurse can't see them either, right? Like these seem like not, like questions that make a lot of sense. All right, so Jessica said, what about downloading the seating chart as a PDF for me? I was just like closed out totally of Power Teacher Pro. Sorry about that. Um, so here is what I would do if I wanted to save my seating chart as a PDF um, is that I would go here to the seating chart and where you have a choice to print. Um, now I'm on a Mac, but a lot of times you have an option within your printers to save as a PDF. And so that's how I did it. Um, I don't know if you have that option on your computer, but um, that or take a screenshot of it. Either of those would be good ways to save that option. All right, so back to the beginning, um, we were talking about, um, I want us to finish in Power Teacher Portal, and then we're gonna take a short break. Um, so we wanna look at student information. So if you will click now on one of these student information cards, you'll notice that it is going to take over your power school controls and list your roster of students over to the left. So you're gonna click on the little ID card. And when you click on the ID card, it's gonna open up your roster. Notice it's very simple to change classes. Um, so, I mean, they have the little ID cards for each class, but technically you click on one, you can get to all of them. Um, so honestly, when I first started teaching this program, I thought it was strange that the names were hyperlinked individually, and I'm going to explain why they are. If I click on the last name of this student, I'm going to land on their default page. Now, how do I know what the default landing page is? Well, technically, right up here in the top, you have manage profile you can dictate what you want the initial student screen to be. So as you kick the tires in this program, I would definitely recommend that you go to your profile, which is up in the top um, right hand corner, and that you choose what is the landing screen that I'm going to use the most with students. Maybe it's demographics because you want contact information. Um, one screen that I love is the quick lookup screen. So I'm actually going to change it to quick lookup and I'm going to click submit at the bottom. One thing you may have to get used to with this program is saving and submitting. Um, and it usually gives you a little warning like, hey, you have unsaved changes, um, but that is a slight change. Um, so I'm going to go back here to my start page and go back to student screens and show you now, if I click on Miranda Anderson's last name, my default landing screen now is Quick Lookup. This is a super handy screen. You can see grades in every class and notice if it is clickable, you can actually click in and see all of the assignments and all the scores. Now, I'm not 100% sure if every teacher will be able to see this, but I'm pretty sure you will because in the training server, all my teacher usernames are basic teacher security groups. So it looks like you're gonna have a bird's eye view 
of how they're doing in each class. So if I click on a student last name, quick look up, quick look up. If I need to change a screen, I go over here to this big drop down box. So let's say that I now want to see demographics. And I also need to see demographics for three more students. So I am going to click on the first name. If I click the first name of the student, it's going to show me the last screen I visited. If I click on the last name, it's going to take me back to Quick Lookup. So this is just an efficiency thing. The reason why it's hyperlinked separately. Last name, Quick Lookup. Last name, Quick Lookup. Change screens to something else like attendance. And then when I click first names, now I'm seeing attendance, attendance, attendance until I click a last name again. So that may not even matter to you, but I do think it's going to save you on some clicks when you need information about kids. A um, lot of handy screens here, including print a report. You can print a report, a single report for one kid here. Um, but I think that most of your printing of reports is going to happen in gradebook. Um, you can see any recommendations that have been made. Um, so like if I go to Miranda Anderson and I go to recommendations, I can see any recommendations I've made for Miranda there. Um, I can also create them here. Um, special programs. If Miranda was a special ed student, her IEP would load here. Um, so a lot of student information screens that I think are going to be handy. And we're going to scroll on down. Um, I've been showing people incident entry here. I don't think this is going to be the case. Um, I don't know how you used to write kids up. You know, I'm going to write you up because you're a bad kid. Um, but this is one way that PowerSchool has for you to do a teacher referral. I am not recommending this anymore because <clears throat> once I make this teacher referral, I as a teacher have no record of it, which I think is ridiculous. When we get into the grade book, I'm going to show you a way to do something called an observation that makes a teacher referral and gives you a record of it. I think that's going to be the way to go. Um, basically, if your administration does not tell you to do something different, like in the past, you've had like a form that you had to fill out and there were three copies. That's probably going to be your process again this year. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see, looking at a question under teacher comments, is that only viewable for teachers or would those be printed out on progress reports? Um, so we're going to look at that in the grade book. There is an option on certain reports for you to include comments. So they can be just for you um, unless you say to include those comments. Um, I am trying to get a copy of a parent portal so that I can see what I see on the parent end and possibly make some instructional videos for schools in my region. Um, so I'm not really sure on the parent end what they see. Um, it may be what the district dictates that they see. All right, moving down toward the bottom, there's utility dashboard. I don't know how this is going to be used. This only showed up about two months ago. Um, when you click it, notice it opens a totally new tab. When I click a kid's name, it takes me to this page with four tabs. First of all, log entries. I was told originally Alabama wasn't using log entries. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. Um, that was a discipline piece, but we were told we're using incident management. So I'm going to ignore that one. Test results. Um, this, of course, would depend upon what the state has put in for this kid, but potentially you could see their scores. Locker data. Power School loves some locker data, but I'm back to it's only as good as the data put in by your school or district. So I'm not sure if this will be up to date. What I do like is a former high school teacher, this graduation planner view. This is super awesome. It actually shows me the progress that a kid has made toward their diploma. Um, what classes they have taken, what classes they are enrolled in, um, if they have completed one section of their required credits. But that's it, utility dashboard, it's kind of, I'm hoping it's going to be customized for Alabama. Underneath that reports, literally I'm ignoring this and I may regret it, but I don't know many teachers who actually print out progress reports and report cards for their kids 
other than printing maybe because you choose to do so a class of progress reports or an individual progress report and you can do that in the grade book so we're just gonna pass on by this but i do want you to look at the ews alerts this showed up about two months ago i have had no training on it i have no data in it but it appears to be a way to track students who are at risk of dropping out so it's my understanding that once the administration sets up certain triggers in the program, if a student has too many absences, they have overall low grades or low ELA, low math, or they are deficient in credits, they'll start populating this early warning report and you'll be able to kind of pay special attention to those kids who seem to have multiple triggers because we know that those kids are going to be at risk of dropping out of school. All right, so back to the start by clicking on the PowerSchool logo. And finally, we are getting to PowerTeacher Pro. So what I'm going to tell you is that we are going to take, um, let's see, just looking at the chat, um, Holly says elementary teachers do print these out. Um, so if elementary teachers print out their own report cards, I'm going to say that the school or the district will um, will have to give you permission to do that. Um, looking at some other questions in there, um, Jessica had said we're always looking for ways to share things. Um, Huh. I don't know how much will be shareable for you. I know Cassie is asking the question that all the librarians ask, how do we look up any student in the school? I don't know. That has literally been asked in every one of my trainings um, because it appears the program will only give you access to students on your roster. And there are those special cases, intervention teachers, librarians. There are certain people that need access to every kid. I don't know if they'll give you a special permission, like security group. If they give you a security group that lets you see every kid, do you have to log into the SIS versus logging into PowerTeacher Pro? I don't know. I'm hoping that somebody can answer that question because it is asked all the time. I have friends that are librarians and they're asking, why can't I see every kid? Um, so I don't know, when you log into this, you may see every kid. For some reason, they may put every kid on a roster for you. Interesting, we'll see. Um, we're not going to do this explore activity necessarily. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Um, this is where I take a break and I went over, you know, all the resources that you guys can access. Um, but let me show you a couple of tricks. Now, these may not be um, new tricks to you, um, but I want to show you this anyway. So here we are at PowerTeacher Pro. Now, I don't know if you remember earlier in the session, I accidentally um, closed it out. So if you've never pinned tabs in Chrome, this is a game changer. If you don't know about this in your Chrome browser, you can right click on a tab and you can pin that tab. Now notice I love pinned tabs because they're all kind of squeezed over here to the side. What happens when you pin a tab, you cannot inadvertently close it. So it scooches it over there to the side and it makes it harder to close. So I definitely recommend that you pin the tab and it pins everything. You notice I've got like two Gmail accounts pinned, a calendar, Drive, Google Keep, Outlook. I've got all these things. I keep those pinned because I'm working in 25 gajillion tabs and I like to have those open all the time. So I pin them so it's harder for me to accidentally close them. Um, so first recommendation, pin the tab. Second recommendation, first I want you to watch this. When I click on Power Teacher Pro, it totally takes over my tab. I no longer have um, Power Teacher Portal open. If I'm a secondary teacher and I need to take attendance each period, that's a lot of back and forth. So. Here's my recommendation. Now, here's another thing that drives me bananas. Already told you that when you click on the logo, it takes you back to the landing screen. That is not the case in PowerTeacher Pro. When I click the logo for PowerTeacher Pro, which in my brain means it's going to take me right here, look what happens. All the way back out to the portal. 
I don't love this, but it is what it is. So here's my solution. When you go to Power Teacher Pro, right click, open link in new tab. Now I have my portal still open, Power Teacher Pro opened in another tab. Now this is where I say, hey, and pin this tab too. Power School, I'm not happy with this. Notice the little baby icons up there. There's no distinguishing factor. They both say sis. I really want this one to say pro, but I'm not a programmer and I can't change it. So I just have to know that this one is pro. This one is um, the portal. And so my grade book is here. My power teacher portal is here. And rather than clicking this logo, which is going to kick me out, I just toggle between these two tabs. Now, if you are one of these people I call the great deleters who never have any unread mail and you work in one tab, this will not work for you. But for people like me who work in 25 gajillion tabs, this is fantastic. So I've got my two tabs open. I'm ready to go. And here's Power Teacher Pro. So in our spreadsheet, I just have um, some information about how to navigate Power Teacher Pro. First thing you're going to want to know is don't click this logo. It's going to kick you out. When you click on this drop down at the top, you will see all of your classes. This is the easiest way to go between classes. So it's weird to me that the portal has Power Teacher Pro linked in each of those classes. You don't have to go back and forth. You click on it one time and toggle between your classes here. So right now it's set to beginning pottery. I'm actually going to work in this biology class. It makes more sense. I have less assignments there. So that's what I'm going to work in. All right, so I can do that and I can click anywhere off of the screen and it gets rid of that drop down menu. Other items up here at the top, the plus sign, much like your Google tools, the plus sign is the universal symbol for adding stuff. So if I'm going to add an assignment in Power Teacher Pro, this is where I will add it. Not a Schoology assignment because those are going to be created in Schoology and synced over. But if I'm creating an isolated assignment, something we did in class and did not do in Schoology, this is where I would create it. This is also where I can create my own categories. So if I'm given the right to have my own categories, I can create them here. The district will likely push out a select amount of categories. So depending on your school or your district and what autonomy you have, you may be able to create more. There's an email function. This is, uh, I've not used this yet, um, but it appears to be a way to send out an email to all your classes. I'm assuming that this would require that the contacts, notice there have all the contacts listed with that kid, that it's got parent contacts somehow associated to it. But I've not played with this. I don't know what it looks like when I send a message because I don't have an associated email to send it to. But it appears I can select classes, I can select contacts, and I can communicate with parents this way, but I haven't tried it. Um, but it looks like a nice option. The other option is observation. Now, this is where I told you this is actually a new feature as in like a month and a half ago. It showed up. I think that this may be the preferred method to do a teacher referral. Um, so we'll look at that in just a second. The bell up here is your report queue. So I'm going to show you the third location and probably the handiest location for you to print reports. And if you have a pending report, you'll see that little number one up there. The help center is here. And then the one thing, if you don't show anybody anything else, show them this. They will be your friend forever. The ability to change the view. All right, now it doesn't, it's not as, as obvious here, but let me show you this. Look at the score sheet view. Watch this. When I change to small, oh my word. If you have old eyes like I do, you're like, what? Um, so please, please encourage people to change the view as needed. Now, the advantage of this is that I can see several columns at a time. If I wanted to see more columns, I could change that. I think right now I only have six columns. 
Um, but I'm going to sit at medium or large um, because it's just easier to read. And you're going to see that there are some little icons and flags within this. I can't even see when it's in small view. They're just blobs. Um, so you can either do small, medium, or large view. Um, I do like that medium and large view because my eyes are old. Um, so anyway, I would definitely show people that. Another thing you're going to notice, and, and I'm going to actually switch, sorry, switch back to assignment list, which is what we land on, is that you're going to see um, this gear on almost every page. Pay attention to the gear. The gear is going to have some helpful tools and it changes on every page. So just because you see these options on this page doesn't mean you'll see the same options on another page. So always check the gear. And then notice you can toggle between terms or all terms, semesters or whatever here. So that's just kind of basic navigation. Now what I do want to show you is something that is not in this presentation because I said it showed up about a month and a half ago. Is this class button. This is really pretty new. If I had made any observations, which is a discipline piece, I'm going to show you how to do that. If I'd made any observations in this first period biology class, they would show up here. Also, assets and textbooks. Now, when I first saw this, I got super excited. I was like, yay, I have a set of novels. I can say check out to blah, blah, blah. Not the case. This is has to be set up at the district level and they have to assign asset tags to certain items like Chromebooks or textbooks or whatever. If they set that up for you, yes, you have the ability to check in and check out materials through the class button. But let's move on to observation. So the last option on here is called observation. This is one possibility for you to document some of your observations in class and also a way to make a teacher referral. Um, so anyway, the way I can set this up is I can say my observation is, oop, I need to click on it, sleeping in class. All right, who's been sleeping in class? Now, right now I'm searching all 113 kids. If I wanted to look up someone specifically like Miranda Anderson, I can search for that student and I would add this student. She was sleeping in class. Location, Caldwell. Date, time, description. Um, sleeping in class today. Okay. Now, I can just leave this as is and save it at the bottom. But I have this little square here that says escalate for review by administration. Now in my world, sleeping in class one time doesn't mean I'm referring you to the office. So I'm actually going to not check that and say save. Now, if I wanted then to edit or add something to that particular um, student, Miranda Anderson, I'm going to go to her observations and I needed to edit it because not only she slept in class today, but she also slept uh, in class third time this week. Now we have a pattern, now we have a problem. I'm gonna say escalate for review by administration and say, once I do that, I cannot edit it anymore. Look at this, can't edit, it's been escalated. So the administration will not see any observations that you make. So document stuff that's going on, stuff that's weird. You know, there are a lot of things that happen with kids that aren't necessarily discipline things, but they're things that you need to document. So you can do it here. And then if you needed to escalate something, you could. Now back to is administration, like, is this what they're going to be using? I don't know. So if your administration doesn't talk about this as a teacher referral, referral possibility, then don't worry about it. All right, so back to the slideshow. We've navigated around Power Teacher Pro. The very first thing you've always done in every grade book is you've set up your grade book. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go all the way down to the gear on the left side, and we're going to use settings to set up the grade book. So Deanne asked, will parents see the observations? I don't think so. 
I don't think I haven't seen a way for you to include that in any kind of report or to include that in a parent portal. So I think it is just your observations and things that you would send to the administration, but that is a great question. All right, so I'm going to go to settings. And I have said this already, this is a very deep and wide program. So where you typically would go into Chalkable and just say how you're going to calculate your nine weeks grades, here you have a few more items that you can add. So first I'm going to go to display settings. Now, if you're a just the facts ma'am person, you can just go straight down to traditional grade calculations and go to work. But I would recommend you take a little time on the front end and set up your grade book like you want it. First of all, how do I want everything displayed? Well, I'm going to say period and day. I want it to be first, second, third, fourth. Scrolling down further, I want to show traditional grades and I want to see letter grade, percentage, and points. Okay. Now, where is this? Some of you are like, wait, where, where did she just get to that? Um, so this is what I would do. I'm going to go down here to settings and I'm in display settings. Um, and I saw in the chat too a few questions about observations. Um, I can only see my observations. I cannot see other teachers observations. Um, and there's not a way to allow that. So it is just your private observations. The only person who's going to know multiple observations were made is if you escalate it to administration and they'll all show up as teacher referrals. All right, next thing, standards usage. So I don't know how many of you are going to be aligning standards with assignments this year. Um, this is just from the book of Randy. I do think that this is something that is coming eventually. Um, so I think that this is something that will be recommended eventually, but it's not right now. Um, but you can say show standards, show standards on assignments. Um, I actually prefer to new assignments to start checked. I want it to auto calculate like an assignment standard grade. So what I think this means is I say these five standards are on this quiz. The kid bombs the quiz, makes a 40. It's going to say all five of these standards were not met. Now I could go in to one standard and manipulate it because maybe they rocked the first five questions, which are all about the standard. I could change it and say they did meet these standards, but the rest of them they didn't. Um, don't ask me about standards based report cards. I do not have that knowledge and I'm hoping somebody is going to put that information out there because I'm aware that some of my um, elementary um, and even I have some school districts that the whole district is standards based. But I know for a fact many of my kindergarten, possibly first grade may do standards based. So I think the potential is there for it and your district will probably load that grade scale. Um, so I'm just saying these are the settings that I would um, put. I'm going to definitely want traditional first, standard second. I'm going to leave this um, checked because it was when it started. Um, how do I want to display it? If you just say last comma first, if you have two John Smiths, that may be get, get confusing. So you can put that middle initial or middle name. Um, where I was talking earlier about Google Classroom and some of those things, um, the biggest errors I've seen is when the names do not match in those two entities. All right, and for the people who remember the good old paper grade book, how about this? Add newly enrolled students to the bottom. Um, so there's nothing worse than a paper grade book and two weeks into school, a kid comes in, you write it at the bottom, you're doing the digital thing, you start typing in, you get to the bottom and you go curses because guess what? That kid was like alphabetized. I know new teachers, you don't understand. But anyway, I think that that is an awesome thing to add. And I'm going to say save. So display settings, set, back to settings. You're like, wow, there's a lot to do. It's really not that hard. The second item is class descriptions. You don't have to put anything here if you don't want to. But this is a place for you to describe your class. It will show up in the parent portal. Some teachers may put like their Amazon wish list, their supply list, their syllabus, all these things here. Um, also, if you're extra, instead of it being biology, it could be Caldwell's awesome science class of life. 
I don't know, whatever. If you're like a Ron Clark Academy and you're the greenhouse or whatever, you can customize the name. Now on the transcript, on the report card, it you know will be the regular name, um, but in the parent portal and other things, you can have a cool custom name. So you have a class description area for each of your classes. I'm gonna save that and then check it out. Caldwell's Awesome Science Class of Life right there. Um, other settings, comment bank. So somebody asked about the comments earlier. So within this program, from assignments all the way up to the report card, I can freehand and type in a comment all day long. But we have a set of district comments that would be pushed out by your district. I have the option to go in and add some as my favorites that will push them to the top of the list. I can use this bank for progress reports, for even assignments or report cards. But then I also have a tab for my comments so I can add my own. One that I think would be helpful for my elementary people is something that says um, currently reading below grade level. Because of the Literacy Act, we're going to have some kids that will be retained because they're reading below grade level. So if you can add this comment throughout everything, push it out there, it's in the parent portal, it may be helpful. So I'm going to make my own comment right there. So I can push these throughout the program um, with this bank or I can freehand a comment whenever I want. Next is class grade scale. This will be set for you at the district level. That's what this little schoolhouse means. Um, if you click it, you'll see the class grade scale. This is why if you are um, a standards based grade, uh, like a kindergarten or something, you'll see a different grade scale for your class. Um, but the district will push this out and set it. I do want you to note these colors. So note that they get orange starting at a 67. And so as you look at some of the progress reports and things that you can do, um, you can easily take note of those kids in the yellow, orange, and red, and know that those are kids that you might need to work with. The next area is student grade scales. So. My disclaimer is don't mess with this unless your administration specifically tells you to. So here's an example. I taught a 10th grade English class. I had a non-English proficient Mandarin Chinese student in there, and I was told I could not give him below a 70. So the district could have pushed out a grade scale specifically for him. Um, another situation, I had a um, self-contained, very low IQ student who was inclusion for my class only three days a week. He was very excited to come in there and participate in the class, but I could only give him a pass fail. So let's say that I have that one inclusion student that can only get a pass fail. I would choose whatever grade scale had been pushed out by the district, and then I would say it is Gregory Graham and save. And it's going to say, are you sure everything's going to be changed to pass fail? And I say save. So no matter what I put in, if I give them a 20, if I give them a 100, it's going to show pass fail. Everything in parent portal, pass fail. Don't just do this willy nilly though. This should only be dictated by your administration. All right, and here is the meat of the matter. For those people that say just the facts, tell me how I set up my grade book. You have to set this part up. If your school or district gives you the autonomy to set up how your grades are calculated, this is where you'll do that. Now, the reason why I say it that way is because as a former high school English teacher, and my husband is a former high school math teacher, we have very different opinions on this. I think total points is the way to go because if it's worth more, it's worth more. My husband, on the other hand, is a total point, I mean, is a um, category weighting guy. He says, tests should always be weighted and homework should be weighted, everything should be weighted. So if I was setting up a grade book and I really didn't want total points, then I would go here to the pencil and I would change it. So if I've been given the autonomy to do so, I'm gonna click this plus sign because I have three categories I'm gonna set up. Um, first of all, I'm gonna change this to category weighting and this to category weighting. Now, if I don't see the category I want, I would have to add it up there with the plus sign. But I'm going to say tests, and I'm going to say tests are worth 60. 
I'm going to say quizzes. Um, no, we're going to do um, homework. Homework is worth 10 and classwork is worth 30. Notice that as I go in and shift the weight, it does the math for me. Weight should basically just mirror what the percentage is that you want. All right, so I got it like I like it. I'm going to say save. I can go in, I can do the same here. Boom, boom, change it to category. Um, and let's just pretend like everything is perfect here. I know these don't say what I want them to say, but we'll just pretend and I'm going to say save. Now I set this up for one class, but I have all these other classes. Remember I said, check the gear. I can copy my calculations. Now I could have copied them within a class. So actually I could have copied from quarter three to quarter four if I wanted to, but I'm going to do to another class. So I'm going to start with semester two, awesome science class, and it's going to go to semester two and whatever class I want, biology, biology. And there you go. And it will give me some errors here because it's a weird training server. But boom, I just changed all of those to category weighting instead of total points. So this is how you would set up your grade book. You do have the option to copy. So you only have to do the hard work one time and copy it to all your other classes. That is under settings, traditional grade calculations. Um, so I have that information here. Um, on slide 30, I talk briefly about Schoology. You have to set this up exactly the same in the grade setup of yours in Schoology. I have a YouTube video here that has a presentation on that grade passback feature. Um, so if you're not attending the Schoology session this afternoon, I recommend that you check that out. I actually cannot repl replicate that set up in that sync because I don't have that PowerSchool app to be able to show you what it looks like between Schoology and PowerTeacher Pro. But trust me, it works. And um, that is a video showing you how to do it. So if you're on the slideshow, you may see I have some skipped slides. Sometimes when I do this for a district, we take a break for lunch and we come back and we start here with this next group. So I'm actually on slide 34 talking about grade calculations um, and this is kind of what we just did with setting up those grade calculations all right so i'm done with all of this and i'm gonna go to the next button down on the left which is grading so we ended i'm um, sorry we started off on assignment list that is your default landing page here are some things i love about the assignment list view first of all Check this out. I have graded 15 out of 16. I've graded 16 out of 16, beautiful green check mark. So I like the fact that it gives me a big picture view of any assignments that I still have left to grade. It also tells me the total points on that particular assignment. If I needed to edit the assignment, I could do that here. I also have a couple of options. So it's no big deal right now. I have six assignments. If it's March, I have 106 assignments and I'm looking for a specific assignment. I can click show filter and I can actually search for an assignment by keywords. That is super handy. It is only available by showing the filter and then searching. So I need to clear my filter too. So like if I did search for quiz and then I hide the filter, I can't see anything else. So I would definitely need to clear that filter to get back to that view. The other option in the gear is copy assignments. So let's fast forward. Maybe you teach first semester government and second semester government. It appears that I can actually copy a ton of assignments over to another class. So I teach one semester and one semester same class. I can actually select the assignments that I want to, um, to copy over. So this is my awesome science class. There's all my assignments. 
I can check the box or I can uncheck it and only choose certain assignments and copy those over. So that's kind of handy. Copy them all over to another class and then go in and make adjustments. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but so it also, I'm assuming, would work year to year. So I'm in 20, uh, what, what would it be, 22, 23 next year that I could actually look back a year and possibly pull assignments from the previous year. I think that would be cool. All right, so that is assignment list. Next, uh, oh, and with assignment list, if I need to grade it, I can just click on the assignment and start grading it right here. Other options, score sheet. So I think this is where a lot of teachers are going to live. It looks most like our grade book. Um, I'm not a fan of the fact that this particular class has letter and number grades mixed. That's never going to happen. Um, I'm going to put this on medium so I can just see um, more grades at a time. Um, but basically in score sheet view is where you can score um, multiple of this assignment. So if you prefer, you can just click on that one assignment and work on it, or you can see a score sheet and work on it. So I can either click here and get this little grading calculator, or if I'm on assignment list view, I can click there. And if I click in the assignment, I still get the grading calculator. So whichever view you prefer, it doesn't matter. Once I click on this, I have a couple of ways to put in my score. I can use their little handy dandy keyboard if I want to and hit enter. Um, I can also go in and just use my own keyboard and hit enter. Um, you may have noticed some little um, icons throughout. These are called flags. So if I have a student, for example, this one says it's collected. Let's say that I want to go in there and I don't want to mark collected anymore. I want to say they turned it in and they earned a 65. Okay, and then I'm actually going to leave these blank and let's imagine they did not do those. What are you noticing when I start to make these changes in the grade book? What do you notice about the look of the grade book as I make changes? If you're still hanging with me, you can type it in the chat. You notice a change besides the number um, when I go to make some changes in my grade book. And I see somebody weighed in. It does, it highlights it. It kind of outlines it orange. I like to call this like a breadcrumb trail. Here's what I like about that. I'm sitting putting in grades and I get interrupted for the 164th time. In the old iNow program, once you put a grade in, it overwrites it. And then I come back and I have no idea where I left off. I don't know what grades I've put in. Maybe I made a mistake. Um, so I love the fact that it gives us this little um, highlighting trail of where I have made changes. And so this is important. You have two options down here. Your preview grades, just going to show you what their new grade would be. And then I have cancel preview and then I have save. So let's say I don't want these changes. I can actually leave this page. It'll say you have unsafe changes and I can just say discard. Um, so I like that. So the grades come back, but I'm going to say save. Now we're back and we have all these changed grades. So pretty handy. I like that. Um, you have these flags. Now you may think that this is a little too much extra work, but if you flag assignments, then you have reports that you can generate. So if I go in and I flag this assignment as late, one, it's a communication tool with parents and with the kid. It was late. That's why it's a 70. Um, also, if you have an assignment that is missing, you can mark it as missing. So here's one that's marked as missing. Now, I'm going to tell you that I don't like to flag assignments before I put grades in. Now, if assignment is missing, I like to go ahead and put a zero in there. So it already affects their average and then flag it as missing. So let's say I've graded this assignment. And I want to use the handy dandy fill button. Now, sometimes we use the fill button because here's a classwork assignment. You get 20 out of 20 if you do it. 
hit the 20, fill, we're done. You can still do that with this one, but here's a feature I love. Let me just say, I'm gonna put a zero in for all the kids that didn't turn it in. I put a zero, I click fill down. And when I say, let's, oh, I've got to save first, sorry. All right, I'm gonna say fill down and um, scores, flags and comments. Yeah, fill everything. So it just filled all the blank spots with zeros. And notice because I had a comment there and I know it's like the weird Latin words that they put when you're filling in the comments, all the comments, all the flags, everything copied over. Um, so technically, if I was going to flag this assignment, I could say zero and missing, and it would actually copy over that flag too. That's actually a new feature. So watch this again. I'm going to say um, zero and flag as missing, and I'm going to say fill down, score slides and comments. <gasps> Boom, it put the grade, the flags, the comments, everything. So I had a teacher the other day that said, can I copy comments from one student to another? Um, for this, I can add a comment per assignment and I could potentially do that. So yes, it is super convenient, Kelly. There's also a fill side to side button. So let's say that I had a student who was absent and I gave them some makeup work. These two makeup work pieces didn't get done. I put in a zero, I call it incomplete. I say fill side to side and it fills it. Pretty cool. Now, notice you have these comment bubbles. So the way you add a comment, you can either freehand a comment down here, um, great like improvement, okay? Or I can go to this comment bubble up here and I can show the comment bank. I have the district comments. I can just click a plus, done. Or I can click the gear and I can go to my comments and I can add that one as well. And I have all of my comments from the bank and then the ones I freehand right there in the assignment. So there can be comments per assignment and then you can also add them later on, progress report and report card. All right, so that is score sheet, assignment list. That's where you're gonna live most of your time. You just go in, you add the scores. Um, next thing here is, cat. Ooh, look, see, it's like, you have unsafe changes, let's save them. All right, categories. These are put out by the district. These are my categories. If you needed to go in and make any edits, you can remember if I want to add a category, I would add a category here. It's very simple to add your own category. You just give it a name, like maybe I have a category called reading logs. I'm going to say it goes to my pottery classes only, and I can give it a description if I want. I can choose a color that I want it to be. Um, there are some defaults you can set up. So let's say my default for this is always going to be 50 points. Reading logs are always 50 points. And when I am done with all this, I hit save and I have a new category. And it's only for my beginning pottery classes and the default value is 50 points. So you can add those categories if you want to. Now on my slides, I talk about the score sheet view, the grading calculator. And now we're going to talk about these last items under grades. This is kind of fast forward to end of the term. I'm getting ready to put out final grades. I'm going to click on traditional. Traditional is going to show me their current percentage, their absences, tardies, and any missing late or incomplete assignments that I have flagged. Um, and notice you've got this um, gear right here if you want to see like a summary of different things for a particular student. You also can show drop students and you have a recalculate final grades. So I tell teachers all the time, hit this button when you're getting close to time for the end of term grades. You don't have to hit it all of the time, but I would say check that button out. Um, I think I may have skipped. Yeah, I did want to show you the gear here on score sheet. Um, you have a filter here, just like you had before, where you could add like a keyword search. 
Um, and I hide that filter. I do like the metrics. I'm going to hide the summary and look at metrics. So um, if you like the idea of mean, median, and mode, so you can see what like the average for the class was for that assignment, um, that's a kind of handy feature there in the gear. You also have that copy assignments feature here and the recalculate final grades feature here as well. And you can say recalculate. So just to make sure you have the latest greatest scores. All right, back to traditional grades. I check all of this, it looks good. I still have to verify my comments, but I do want you to notice that final grade status is how you will post grades. So you'll have the option at the end of the term to what we've always called post grades, PowerSchool calls it finalizing grades. In order to push it up to administration, you would check this box and you would hit save. Um, we're not going to do that right now because I haven't done any comments for their progress reports. So I'm going to go over here and go to comment verification. And now I'm going to add some comments so I can either type them in here or go here and show the comment bank. Make sure I'm looking at the district comments. And then I can go down here and click, click, click and close. And I wish they had a fill button here. Do they have a fill button here? Um, oh, what? No, I can't do that. I was just trying to see. That was a question I had last week was, can I fill a comment? So it doesn't look like, mm, let me see. I'm going to try again. Uh, comments only. <gasps> what that's new like literally this week oh my gosh my dreams have come true all right so i'm easily amused um up until this point the fill button wasn't working for comments but now it is so if you are like you want to put the same comment for everybody because let's just be real sometimes to save time we do you can do that and then if you have a particular comment that you needed to add for a kid you can add that one i'm so excited about that so that's a new change um so i'm gonna save and notice i have the final grade status here too you don't have to do it in both places you just have to do it in one so once i've said final grades are complete in one location it pushes it up to the administration and they know that your grades are posted yay all right we talked about categories let's talk about creating an assignment i was doing this training about a week ago and one girl said have you shown us how to create an assignment yet no i haven't here we go let's create an assignment so i have done all my assignments in schoology i've synced it up but i also have some assignments we're doing in class that are not going to be in schoology so i'm going to click the plus sign and i'm going to cl click assignment so i'm ready to create my first assignment so first i need to select what classes it goes to so this is going to be for all my biology classes so super handy make it once shoot it out to everybody what is the name of the assignment? Let's see something sciencey, Shark Week Project. Why not? All right, what's my category? It's a project. When is it due? Notice I have a per class due date, which is kind of cool. If you have, say, one class at the end of the day that usually is behind or it has a lot of IEPs in it, you could set individual due dates. I'm going to say the score type is points, and this is a big one. This is worth 200 points. And look at this right here. If you've not been paying attention, pay attention right here. Do not uncheck this box. Listen to me. Do not uncheck this box. It's going to happen. You mark my word. Somebody's going to uncheck this box. If I do, I've basically cut this assignment off and thrown it into the ocean. It doesn't exist. Why would I uncheck this? I asked the power school people. So their answer was, oh, let's say you do a grammar benchmark test and you don't want it to count against them, but you want to see the grade in the grade book. I'm like, make this checkbox a little less obvious, but leave it alone. If you uncheck it, this assignment is as good as zero. It doesn't exist. So leave it alone. Now you can click save, but remember the program is deep and wide. I have multiple tabs on this assignment. So the next tab 
is students. If you're fancy and you want an assignment to only go to these five IEP students, or you want it to go to a group of students because you gave them a choice and they're doing the brochure assignment. These others are doing another assignment. You can <clears throat> say show select or show all, uncheck everybody and check the students that you want this assignment to go to. I'm gonna say show, I want it to be everybody, but you have that option. Next is standards. So if you um, are not going to do this or not going to make a practice of this, this really won't matter. But I would encourage you this year to try this out at least for your tests, assessments, quizzes. Like if you know what standards you assessed there, <clears throat> then you're going to start getting some really neat progress reports for your kids. Um, so I know these are literacy and reading standards, but just humor me. I'm being told by the state they will push out the standards for your class, but I'm just going to say these are the standards that this particular project is going to assess. And you got one more. This might be one of my favorites. When to publish this assignment. So as an English teacher, a lot of times I give papers and I sit at home on Sunday in my fuzzy slippers. I make like seven assignments that are going to be happening over two weeks. I put them in the grade book and the parent portal. You have some people that are going to check it like every day. And they go in there and like, why is Sally not got a grade for the Odyssey essay? We haven't even started the Odyssey essay. Like it won't even be due till Friday and then it may take me two weeks to grade. I can actually say that I don't want it to even publish the assignment until a particular due date. I love that. That's pretty cool. So anyway, I like that. So I'm going to say save and close. And let's see what it looks like. Assignment list, Shark Week project. There it is, zero out of 16. So creating an assignment is not challenging. If you already have done it in Schoology, you don't have to do it again. The assignment will pull over from Schoology. Now, if you want to align standards or set the publishing point, then you may want to go in and tweak it, but that's up to you. All right, so we've learned how to create an assignment. Um, breezing on to um, slide 42, we're gonna look at the next button down, which is students. So you're gonna see some of the same pages that you saw in the portal here. Um, so notice I can click on demographics. I can see a student's demographics. I can either click the students button or I can click this button and it takes me to all the pages I can see for a student. Here's quick lookup, looks identical to the portal. Um, so my theory, which may be wrong, <coughs> is that this is a newer product and eventually they're gonna merge more and more information from the portal into this. And maybe there won't be two places to do that. But right now there's two and it will probably be that way all year. But you do have access to a lot of student information here, including any observations that you made about a student. Um, this is the transfer scores button that I think is going to be handy. All right, so, um, but I haven't played around with it. So I think I would like have to, um, like choose a student that was in a particular class um, to transfer their scores. There's no existing assignment scores to copy to this class. Um, so I, I don't know, but I think this transfer scores option is maybe the answer to what we're wanting to do with students. So I'm still learning about that one, but I'm gonna try to find some more details about that because I've had multiple people ask me that one. Um, demographics, I can go back out to Power Teacher Portal here as well. I can click assignments and just see this student's assignment scores for the different assignments. All right, um, so we looked at the different student screens. I do want us to look at progress. So this is a feature that I think is super unique. If I click on progress and I go to traditional, I can see my grade distribution for the class. Notice I can shift between classes. Maybe I want to see first period. Whoa, a lot of Fs. You know why? We added a bunch of zeros a little while ago. 
this shows me my curve or lack of a curve. I can click view all. Now I can see the trend. So quarter three, look how well all these kids were doing. Quarter four, bombed. Look at all these reds. I can see that there are scores trending down. I can click at semester two and see we've got a ton of Fs and Ds. So I love this progress report for traditional. Um, and if you have been adding standards, look at the standards report. This is really cool. So I can see on this particular standard, I have 16 kids above the line, above the red, and they have done really well. I can click on it and I can see the progress kids have made on that one particular standard. Then I can also click an assignment um, section and see what assignments I click target that standard. So this may not be something you're ready to jump on board with this year as you're learning the program, but look at the potential for tracking what kids know and do not know. If we're saying we really want to help kids and we want them to be successful in our class, then tracking what standards they have achieved mastery in and not achieved mastery in is going to be crucial, and this does it. Um, so pretty cool. I will tell you in Schoology, there is standards alignment I am not sure that it's going to pass from Schoology to Power Teacher Pro, um, at least not yet, but I think that is coming. Um, but I am assured that the standards will be loaded from the state for all of your grade levels and subject areas. All right, we're on the home stretch. We're looking at reports and we are gonna finish a little bit early. Um, when it comes to reports, this is the third location you're gonna spend the most time here. I'm only gonna show you two of these reports. One of them is the individual student report. This is basically a progress report. You can do it for a group of kids, a whole class, one kid. All right, so I'm going to call this one. I can call it whatever. It's going to hold on to my settings. So when I go in here and I tweak some settings, it holds on to it till I change it. So I'm going to call this first uh, nine weeks progress. All right, what classes do I want to choose? I can maybe choose two, all, whatever. I'm just going to choose two classes right now. Do I want to see a student's full schedule? So I have people ask me all the time about a comprehensive progress report. Check that box if you want comprehensive progress report, all of their classes. I don't recommend this. Separate report by student. So let's say I'm doing um, a whole class, so 20 kids. If I say separate report by student, it will give me a zip file with 20 individual document files. Not like I'm going to print it out and I want a new kid on each page. That's fine, but that's a single file. If I check this, it gives me 20 individual files I have to open. Not a fan. Now, if you're going to be emailing those progress reports to parents, separate them by student because then I can pick and choose the files. I don't, I don't recommend this. Moving on, how do you want it sorted? I'm going to leave it as is. What do I want to include? So we ta talked about what, you know, where do you see these comments? Do I want to see comments on this? Do I want to see standards grades? In other words, I've been tracking standards and it gives them a grade for standards mastery. Assignments, do I want to see the comments? Any comments I've associated with assignments? Do I want to see standard scores? Do I want to see category totals? So you can check in here all of this. What reporting term right now it's semester two. Um, let's just do end of semester. That's all we're looking at. And I'm going to say semester two. And then I can filter some other things. Don't click run report. Why? There's tabs at the top. So I can run this for just a handful of kids. So let's say I don't want it for the whole class. I want it for these few students. So just a few. And then one more tab, format. Do I want a portrait or landscape? For this particular report, it's only a PDF. For some other reports, you also have an Excel option. And where do I want the page break between the kids? Um, I can make a note at the top or the bottom. This is a progress report, so I definitely want a signature line. Now I can run report. 
Oh, assignment did it with a full schedule. Either select a single class or deselect assignments option. Blah. All right, so let's go back up here and. Hmm, let's just do one class and see if that makes a difference because it fussed at me and I didn't realize it was going to do that and format and maybe. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. I think I had to choose all students for some reason, but you are able to choose more than one. All right, as it is working, you'll see the rainbow bubbles. Um, when it is done, we'll see that it is finished. Um, while this one is working, I'm gonna go down to, oh, and look, we get rainbow bubbles over here too, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna go down to student roster. This is a report I think many of you are going to be printing a lot, probably for the first week of school, probably as you go during the year. So I'm going to call this class roster. Um, I could also make it like a way to check off fees that people do, attendance when a sub is there. It's very customizable. All right, so I'm going to select my classes. I'm just going to do one class right now, but you can do multiple classes. Um, I'm going to use the custom class name because I like it. Um, last name is how we're going to sort kids. What student columns do I want? By default, I have a name column. Now I've already been in here and added a bunch of different columns, um, but I'm gonna say last name is what I wanna see. I want a student name. I'm gonna also add gender. Um, and then what contact information, um, I've got too many right now. Uh, let's say, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave it as contact name, phone, email, gender. Um, what contacts do I want to see? Just emergency contacts. So I'm going to remove this blank one. So I should get name, grade. Um, I'm going to push gender up there next to, um, so name, grade, gender, phone, contact name, phone, and email. So I'm actually take out phone. So that should be good. So see how customizable this is. You could also have a blank column where you could check things off or add scores. I used to call it a worksheet report. Remember the other tabs, I've got students. So I can do all students or one student or whatever format. This one allows Excel. So if you're getting all this contact information and you want in a spreadsheet, you want to add all the spreadsheets together, you can do that. I don't need a signature line, so I'm going to say run report. And while it is running, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to look at um, the other report that is hopefully finished by now. And we're waiting. I didn't know this was going to take so long. It has been queued. In other words, it is in line with all my other reports. And back to here. I'm going to go to my report queue, and it looks like we should be done with the first nine weeks progress. Um, this is going to be a download. So it is not going to be like right click, open a new tab. So I'm just going to click on it. It will download and then we'll open it up and see what a first nine weeks progress report looks like. And then eventually we'll do class roster. I don't know why it's taking so long. I did have somebody ask the other day, is this program going to be slow? I don't know. I can't tell you. All right. So this is Miranda Anderson's world history course final grade, assignment scores, crazy comments, um, any flags like absent or exempt, I included those. All right, now her English class, because I did want the whole schedule, so it's comprehensive. And there is first aid. And moving along, that's home repair and PE and a lot of comments in there. So this is a big one, open media. So because I chose her whole semester, there it is, page 10 of 163. Why? Because I printed everybody's comprehensive. Here's Matthews. Now, this prints one continuous thing. If I want them individually, I could have chosen that and then pulled them individually. So there you can see what it looks like. 
Um, the class roster is now finished. I'm going to open that one. Oh, internet connection is not available. That is not good. We'll try it again and maybe eventually we'll see the class roster. Um, it, I chose a PDF. I could have chosen an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so notice I get name, grade, gender, contact name, phone, and email. I have a blank spot over here in case I needed to check something off. And there it is for the whole class. So I think that's going to be a handy report for you. Um, I do have some screenshots on what the different reports look like. Um, and on slide 51, I actually um, had this one as a skip slide. So if you are a Google Classroom person, there is a Chrome extension called Grade Transferer. I did not make this up. It's a real thing. And um, it is $2.50 per month. I have watched some YouTube videos on it. It appears some teachers love it. Some teachers fuss because there are some errors with it. But if you're married to Google Classroom and you just want to use it and your administration says it's okay, there is this Chrome extension um, and there's a gear where you can import scores. But I'm telling you, I've had some people say the process takes so long, you might as well just enter the scores um, by hand. Um, so I don't know that that's going to um, solve your Google Forms solution um, in Classroom or not. Um, it might. Uh, so anyway, that is something to think about if you are um, doing the Google thing. All right, so this is kind of the end of our Power Teacher Pro session. I like to say it is like drinking from a fire hose. It's a lot of information in a three hour time period and we're all like super distracted and I totally get that. So I did record this. I'm actually going to cut that recording off.